What is DeFi? Whether you know it or not, a very big part of your life is owned by the government. The fact that the money that you have in your pocket has value is the result of an intricate structure called a centralized finance system. The government controls the supply of money. They can print more money if they want to, and the value of your hard-earned money deteriorates. They can stop you from borrowing money, and they can even stop you from transferring money. Or worse, if the bank fails, your deposited money could be in trouble. Quite a lot of risk, right? Now, decentralized finance, or DeFi for short, turns this concept upside down. When you have seen this video, you should be able to explain what DeFi is, even to your mom. You will know how it works, and most importantly, you will know how to take advantage of this money revolution. Now, make sure to watch until the very end, as I will also explain to you the most important risk factors related to DeFi that not everyone is aware of. And for the sake of transparency, this video is for informational purposes only, and no financial advice is provided. So, what is DeFi? The simplest way to understand DeFi is to distinguish it from the present financial system. The financial ecosystem that we are used to is centralized, with the governments, banks, insurance companies, stock exchanges, and other central institutions. This means that your money and your financial position are affected by someone else's decisions. And as I said, there are a lot of disadvantages to this system. And that's the reason why the decentralized alternative, DeFi, was born. DeFi is an open and global financial system that gives you control over your money. So how does it work? Decentralized finance essentially replaces intermediaries, like banks or even governments, and helps people to connect directly with each other. However, in the absence of intermediaries, there needs to be a system that ensures that the transactions between the parties are undertaken in the exact way that they are intended to. To ensure that, DeFi uses cryptocurrencies and smart contracts. Cryptocurrencies, as you might already know, are the likes of Bitcoin. They are virtual or digital money that takes the form of tokens or coins. The cryptography at the back end allows for the creation and processing of cryptocurrencies. The second component, smart contracts, is the critical building block on which the DeFi projects are built. Bitcoin in many ways was the first DeFi application, which enabled storing and transferring value. But it isn't programmable. Sounds odd, right? Why would you want to program your currency? Well, as I, as I mentioned earlier, in the absence of intermediaries, the alternative system must ensure that the intended goal of the transaction is actually achieved. In other words, if no one controls the system, you would need a set of rules that make sure that a certain action is being conducted. And this is where all the mighty Ethereum enters the stage. Ethereum is a blockchain platform that gives a framework to make cryptocurrency programmable using smart contracts. Smart contracts are the lines of code that program logic into the cryptocurrencies. These lines of code are publicly available for verification. The cryptocurrencies programmed with the lines of code will behave exactly as they are programmed. This will ensure that the intended goal of the transaction is achieved. The combination of cryptocurrencies and smart contracts opens up immense possibilities to create different kinds of DeFi projects, which we will discuss further in the video. Now, before we move on to the most important DeFi use cases, you can think of DeFi in layers. So there's a blockchain. Ethereum is a decentralized open source blockchain with smart contract functionality, which enables the creation of DeFi projects. There's cryptocurrencies, Ether and the other tokens or currencies are used to enable transactions in DeFi. There's smart contracts. The lines of code written in a programming language are used to program how cryptocurrencies will behave. And then there are DeFi projects. The projects are created by developers on the Ethereum network using cryptocurrencies 
and smart contracts. So now that we understand what DeFi is and how it works, let's look at the four most important use cases offered by DeFi. First off is stable coins. One of the requirements for DeFi to replace the existing financial system is to have stable coins. At present, major cryptocurrencies are highly volatile. Such uncertainty deters people from participating in the crypto world. Imagine holding a currency that is worth $100 today, $120 tomorrow, and $50 a day after. You would rather hold a stable currency, like the US dollar than such an unstable currency. Stablecoins does just that. Stablecoins are cryptocurrencies without volatility. They are pegged to the value of real-world assets like US dollars or gold, and they provide a safe harbor for investors. They don't have to leave the crypto ecosystem even if the market is volatile. The goal is to make stablecoins widely used as currency for daily transactions in the future. But the real beauty of it is that it can be embedded into DeFi projects using smart contracts. Second, lending and borrowing. DeFi projects allow you to earn interest on your crypto holdings if you plan to hold cryptocurrency for the long term. On the other hand, it allows you to borrow cryptocurrency without having to go through credit checks and without having to share your private information. This seems like an obvious risk for a lender. However, this risk is mitigated as the borrower needs to put up collateral for getting the loan. For example, let's meet two fictional characters, Mr. Investor and Mr. Trader. Mr. Investor believes that Ether is going to be valuable in the future and buys $1,000 worth of it. He doesn't intend to trade short-term volatility, but plans to hold it for the long term. He realizes that it is a good idea to earn interest on it while he holds it. In this case, he uses a platform called Av or Compound, both of which are DeFi projects that enable lending and borrowing to lend Ether. Mr. Trader holds stablecoins, USDC, worth $1,200, but he believes the price of Ether is going to increase in the short term. Instead of buying Ether directly, Mr. Trader puts up $1,200 worth USDC as collateral to borrow $1,000 worth of Ether from Mr. Investor. Say Mr. Trader carries out several trades in Ether and makes $1,100 worth of Ether. He pays back $1,000 worth of Ether plus interest to Mr. Investor and releases $1,200 worth of USDC back. In this case, borrower Mr. Trader didn't need to sell his USDC or invest additional money to buy Ether. He was able to earn from his short-term trade of Ether without owning it. Lender, Mr. Investor, on the other hand, earned interest from his holding, while also benefiting from the appreciation and the value of Ether while he was at it. Okay, so let's move on to the third use case, trading. Trading cryptocurrencies is a pretty important part of the DeFi ecosystem. It gives liquidity to the investors and traders of cryptocurrencies to buy and sell their holdings. The crypto exchanges connect you with people across the globe and open up opportunities for you to buy and sell thousands of cryptocurrencies. The crypto exchange can be a centralized exchange like Coinbase or Binance, which is managed by a company. However, DeFi projects like Uniswap provide an interesting alternative, a decentralized exchange or DEX. In a DEX, a group of investors creates a liquidity pool of cryptocurrencies, which is available to traders to buy and sell for a fee. If you're an investor in DEX, you can invest your crypto holdings in the liquidity pool and you receive a fee from the traders for carrying out a transaction on DEX. If you're a trader, you pay a fee to the investors of the liquidity pool for carrying out a trade. There is no central company or human involved to manage the exchange. The smart contracts running on the DEX ensures that the intended transactions of buying, selling, and fee payments are carried out as intended. Now, the last important use case is insurance. 
The decentralized alternative of insurance uses the power of blockchain so people can share risk without the need for an insurance company. Nexus Mutual is a DeFi project that gives insurance cover against the failure of smart contracts and exchange hacks. Since the decentralized applications are at a nascent stage, they are prone to the risk of having bugs in the smart contracts or hacking. Nexus Mutual, which provides insurance for these risks, is run entirely by its members. Only members can decide which claims are valid. All member decisions are recorded and enforced by smart contracts on the Ethereum public blockchain. You can purchase coverage on Nexus Mutual as well as participate in claims assessments, underwriting, and governance. Now, before I present the three most important risk factors you should be aware of, please hit the like button and subscribe if you find this video valuable in any way. Okay, so in my opinion, you should be aware of the following risks before committing any money to any DeFi project. Number one, stable coins are by their very nature vulnerable. They're made to hit a predetermined face value with a variety of reserve assets. Stable coins that rely on competitional procedures to preserve their value are vulnerable to market forces, operational breakdowns, and other risks. In other words, even if stable coins are looked upon as safe harbors, they can still fail. Number two, though DeFi smart contracts are open source, they are not easy to read for the general public like you and me. Currently, there's a need to trust the more technical members of the Ethereum community who can read code. The open source space community helps keep developers in check, but this need will diminish over time as smart contracts become easier to read and other ways to prove the trustworthiness of code are developed. Number three, DeFi projects are still at the infancy stage and are now focused mostly on crypto asset speculation, investment, and arbitrage rather than real world use cases. DeFi is vulnerable to criminal activity and market manipulation because of the insufficient implementation of anti-money laundering, know your customer rules, as well as transaction anonymity. And the final and fourth risk factor is this. Imagine standing on a rug with all the trust in the world and someone pulls it off from under you with sudden force. Now rug pulls has recently been one of the biggest risk factor when it comes to DeFi lending. In this case, developers produce new crypto tokens and market them to investors to increase their value and overall liquidity. They then drain the funding pool and crash the token's value to zero before disappearing with the cash. Not the thing you want to experience. Now what do you think? Are you afraid of the risk factors or do you think DeFi will outperform the centralized system we have today? I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to show your appreciation for our efforts and consider subscribing to Crypto Skills so you don't miss our next bite-sized explainer video on crypto. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.